did you see? Hold on a minute. Let's do that again. Everyone got their eye protected. What is that? Rotary dampers. How's it even doing that? Rotary dampers. What day is today? Rotary, Rotary dampers. dampers. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today, we're talking about world clock calculator calendar. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Freudian slip. Rotary dampers. I wasn't gonna do this, and then I was, and then I wasn't, and now here I am. I don't expect a full video. Think of this more like a featurette. Oh, oh, a public service announcement. As marvelous as rotary dampers are, there might not really be all that much to say about them. But it is Rotary Damper Awareness Week, so I thought I'd do my part. Do you remember way back when, probably somewhere around that video about making springs at home for fun and profit. I may have mentioned in passing doing a video on rotary dampers, and, well, some of you just didn't want to let that go. I expect many of you are already familiar with rotary dampers. You may have even replaced one or two in that glove box that keeps popping out and hitting your wife in the knees. But perhaps this video might get you thinking. Or it might not. What do I know? It's taken me so long to get the dampers because these dumb marketing gadgets, corporate swag, aren't as easy as to find as they were back in the 90s. I used to have a drawer full of these things. And to be honest, I've been looking for the stand-up calculator, which is technically the same exact thing, but way cooler. I think this world clock slash calculator should do the trick. And one of these is probably more relevant today as it's ever been. I thought I had a better collection of dampers, but these should get the point across. Looks like I've got four rotaries and two linear. But first, let me take a step back and start at the beginning. The Oxford English Dictionary, probably, but I used Google, defines a damper as a person or thing that has a depressing, subduing, or inhibiting effect. We'll be talking about the thing part of that definition and tackle depressing people another time. In the case of these dampers, that subduing or inhibiting effect they're talking about refers to motion, or speed, I guess. They slow stuff down. And by stuff, they usually mean springs. But not necessarily. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I should add that these are off-the-shelf, plug-and-play accessories, I guess. Industrial Lego, as our neighbor to the north so eloquently puts it. You pick the shape and size you need, make sure it's rated for the forces you're dealing with, and just plug it into the thing you're building, essentially. On top of that, they're not very expensive. I don't know, 50 cents for a small one, up to a buck or two for some of the bigger ones. And the selection is huge for these things. They'll start from a fraction of an inch pound, rated torque, up to tens if not hundreds of foot pounds. You can get them so they damp in both directions or dampen only one direction, meaning they'll slow your thing down in one direction but pose no resistance on the return. The exhaustive selection you see here includes two types, linear and rotary. The linear ones really live up to their name by moving in a line. They'll slow things down in a straight line. You probably have a bigger one of these on your storm or screen door. If you don't have a screen door, or yours happens to be the loud slamming type, think of this like a shock in your tiny little car. Okay, pick up on this. Your car has a suspension, right? Right? Well, there are springs in there. When you hit a bump or a hole or drive up the curb fast while you're parallel parking in front of your friends, the springs absorb that blow. They'll do nothing for that humiliation you feel, but mechanically, you, inside the car, don't feel it as hard as your tire or ego just did. The springs make for a more comfortable ride home to hide your shame. But if you only have springs, or your shocks are shot, when you hit that bump, your car will bounce up and down for an hour and that music will start playing like in a Charlie Chaplin movie. So along with those springs, you have, or should have, shock absorbers, linear dampers, which slow that bounce down fast. The fact that they're slowing down movement makes them dampers. Now fine, if you want to get technical, linear dampers and shock absorbers aren't exactly the same thing. I'll leave that as today's homework assignment though. Which brings us to rotary dampers. Same thing, but packaged differently so they work rotationally instead of linearly. These will damp linear motion, and these will damp rotary motion. Though the lines can blur here a bit as some linear dampers are just rotary dampers on a rack and pinion. Rotary dampers packaged differently, giving you linear motion out of a rotary damper, which you might use probably depends a lot on what you're trying to do. Now, these two rotary dampers come with a little pinion or a spur gear on the end. That would nest with another gear or a feature in your part and slow it down. 
Isn't that just the cutest little thing you've ever seen? This one instead, no gear, but the business end has two flats. Put that into a hinge, for example, stop the back somehow. The back usually has some kind of a feature or a key you can attach to to keep the back end from not moving and allow the front end to damp. That's uh, a tough one. Anyway, put this in a hinge, for example, and you have a damped hinge. A hinge that now moves unnaturally slow and consequently looks really cool. Sells trash cans. And there's this big boy. This one is flange mounted and has a square socket. Does the same thing as the other ones, just a different way to mount it. Maybe you've got something against gears, I don't know, I'm not judging. So you mount the flange to something solid and you put the part that you want to move slowly in that square socket. Doesn't that look an awful lot like a 3 8 inch socket drive? Hold on. Ah, oh, check that. It's not exactly 3 8 but it's about the same fit as a socket. If you're upset at how much battery life you're getting out of your cordless drill, just throw one of these things on. Marvel. Okay, sorry, quick correction. When I was talking about the trash can, I was thinking the kitchen trash can, which I know uses a pair of rotary dampers. I didn't end up actually filming that one because it was full of trash. And if I touched it, I would have had to take it out. So instead, I used the bathroom one. And it, apparently, doesn't use rotary dampers the way I described. Notice there isn't really anything in that hinge area. Instead, it uses a linear damper down at the bottom. Your foot picks up the lid, and that little damper lowers it nice and classy-like. I mean, it's just me, but it seems like dampers aren't used as much as they used to be. Maybe I should say they're used a little more exclusively for top shelf stuff. Not thrown around everywhere like the good old days. Anyone remember tape decks? You push that eject button like two inches down, hear the big thud, and then the cassette door would open nice and graceful. They almost all had that feature. To the point where the ones that just flew open and pulled the whole stereo over seemed so unrefined and barbaric. But I suppose with all the cost cutting that happens, they'll only throw in a 50 cent damper if they can charge you an extra 50 bucks for the final product. Contrived case in point. This is a portable DVD drive, and I attach it to a power bank. I store my excess solar energy on DVDs and charge my power bank on cloudy days. Don't laugh at me. I can get like six times more energy on a DVD than I can on a CD. It's a no-brainer. But look at this. Did you see how jarring that was? Come on, Samsung, you can do better than that. What are we living in some kind of bizarro world now where I have to manually open my own PC peripherals? At this point, you might be asking yourself how these things work. To find that out, just follow the money. And the money leads to big oil, just like it always does. The insides of these things are filled with oil. And the part that moves has sort of like baffles on it. Think of like a water wheel, maybe. Trying to push those baffles through the oil fill causes drag, a resisting torque in this case. And you have your rotary damper. Now, perhaps that's not super interesting, but I bring it up for a reason. Because these rely on that oil viscosity, their performance changes with temperature. Well, speed and temperature. If you try to whip one of these rotary ones really fast, you'll feel higher resistance than if you go slow. And if it's hot out, or your damper is in a hot environment, the oil or grease or whatever's in these thins out and provides less resistance. Check this graph out. You should be able to find these, or data anyway, for your favorite damper. The faster you try to move it, the higher the resistive torque. And the hotter it gets, the less the torque. Granted, these changes aren't super big, but just keep them in mind if you're going to install a damped toilet seat in your Alaskan outhouse and you need to sit down fast. It might take a minute before it's ready for you. Be prepared. That's all I'm saying. So how do we suppose this thing does its magic? Rotary dampers. It's obviously spring-loaded, and the button acts as sort of a latch to cut those springs loose. And the slow open probably means Given how cheap one of these things must be to manufacture, I'm not sure if we'll find actual commercial dampers in here. Well, I mean, we might, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they sort of built their own. Maybe there's some O-rings and silicon grease doing the same thing. I guess there's only one way to... This thing looks like it's made up of six pairs of plastic parts. Each pair is sort of clamshelling around the hinge. Maybe you can see that split line there. 
split line there, and split line there. I'm going to guess the dampers are on the ends. Yuck. Ah, oh, the sneaky. And it looks like we have dampers. I guess a spring on one side and a damper on the other. Nothing on one side. Oh, there was a spring in there. Is that just a torsion spring in some sticky goop? Come on. That is extremely sticky. I think it'd be safe to assume we'll find the same thing in the other side. Yep, just one side. I guess if I turn that in place, there it goes. I don't know if I've ever quite seen it done that way. That's kind of clever. Give me a minute to go wash my hands. Just in case that was difficult to see, have a look at it here. I'm afraid to touch these parts. Whatever this is in here is not water soluble. Alcohol did absolutely nothing to it. And acetone is barely taking it down. So they've made like a capsule with a spring. Frankly, it looks like a small compression spring, not wound closed. And the little leg of that compression spring is left across the center so it engages with features in the plastic on both ends. And then it's just pumped full of this I don't know. Some kind of silicone. Extremely sticky. So it looks like they've built their own. A spring-loaded rotary damper, all as one self-contained unit. Unless these are a thing, but I've never seen these before. Well, in the famous words of Forrest Gump, that's all I've got to say about that. Moral of this story? Dampers are a thing. Maybe you found that interesting. And who knows? You might have a project someday where one of these could help you solve a problem. I really enjoyed your company today, and thanks for watching.